Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that you need to know as an investor. So without further ado, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, go ahead and comment down below about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into today's video. Right now, the stock market looks pretty primed for future growth, considering that both the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 are up right now. The reason for this is that several technology companies have rebounded recently from losses, because in the first half of the month, some technology companies did not do as well as anticipated regarding their earnings. However, Apple recently received an upgrade by Bank of America to a buy rating, to where Bank of America said that Apple could soar more than 20%, which is great news for Apple. Apple investors. We're going to see more throughout this video that a multitude of technology companies are actually doing quite well right now, so I can't wait to get into that. You should also be aware that we are approaching a very interesting IPO, which is an initial public offering about a private company that will be traded on the public stock market, and that company is none other than Reddit. If you didn't know, Reddit is a social media company that operates a social media platform, and according to Reuters, this has been a long-awaited initial public offering, which will launch by the end of March. So investors need to be on the lookout for this company, especially as we head into February, when they will officially release their public filing. The reason why you would need to pay attention to this company is that all eyes are going to be on Reddit, because Reddit was one of the largest catalysts, which caused stocks like AMC and GameStop to explode in their share prices. My prediction is that when Reddit's IPO is launched, the share price will absolutely skyrocket and surge in price to fall back down later on. But I think investors, if you are a smart trader, could really benefit from this giant surge in their share price once the IPO is officially released. Back in 2021, Reddit was valued at around $10 billion, and they will reportedly sell 10% of its shares to compete with other social media platforms, but overall, this is going to be a giant catalyst that investors need to be aware of, because like I said, Reddit's share price could explode as soon as they become tradable on the public stock market. We haven't really seen an IPO like this anytime soon, and I am very excited for the future of Reddit as a company and as a stock. In the macroeconomic economy, we also see a lot of good news, because jobless claims have dropped to their lowest level in over a year, which is great news, and once we get very good macroeconomic news, this normally positively impacts the overall stock market. You should also be aware that Microsoft, which is one of my all-time favorite companies, is reportedly considering making some Xbox-exclusive games available on rival consoles such as PlayStation and Nintendo Switch, and I think this would actually be a pretty smart move by Microsoft. And I think this is going to act as a positive catalyst for Microsoft's share price, especially once we see these revenues coming in from this decision. Speaking about mega cap technology companies, we also see Apple is back in the news as the Department of Justice is preparing an antitrust lawsuit against Apple. Apparently, this lawsuit will be served to Apple in March because Apple has been accused of using both its hardware and its software to stifle competition. And this will be pretty problematic for Apple, but overall, I don't think this is really going to impact Apple that much. In previous videos, we went over major layoffs over at Google, Amazon, and other companies, but as of right now, now, we actually see Macy's cutting 2.3 thousand jobs. This would equate to roughly 3.5% of their workforce as many companies continue to lay off people. Macy's is also anticipated to close five of their stores as a plan to cut expenses and costs to revive sales in this company, or at least try to extend profits and cut back on expenses. In other news, we see companies such as Novo Nordisk and Eli Lilly increasing the prices of their pharmaceuticals, including diabetes medications. And this is due to inflation. And and as inflation continues to creep upwards, these types of companies need to increase the prices of their pharmaceuticals to remain profitable. I actually hold Eli Lilly in my personal portfolio, and I think by them increasing the prices of their pharmaceuticals, this is just going to increase their overall revenue, which is honestly pretty good news for investors. In more macroeconomic news, not only are jobless claims downtrending, but we also see mortgage rates falling. And this is great news, because mortgage rates have fell to their lowest level in the last eight months 
months, hitting just 6.6% for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. So it seems that interest rates in regards to mortgages have peaked, and we could start to see that trend downwards, which is great news for homeowners, as well as people who are looking to buy into real estate. In other news, if you hold any airline stock, then we actually have a fantastic news for you right now. If you recall from our previous news updates, you know that Spirit Airlines has downtrended in their share price aggressively after their merger with JetBlue was denied by a federal judge. However, today, Spirit Airlines stock, ticker symbol SAVE, ticker name SAVE, has jumped by over 20% in their share price. And this is pretty great news considering that yesterday I actually invested into Spirit Airlines anticipating an uptrend in their share price, which is exactly what happened today. Spirit Airlines is a struggling discount carrier. However, they said that they experienced strong holiday travel in the fourth quarter, which positively reflected in their revenues. Spirit now projects to post revenue of $1.3 billion when it releases their final quarter 2023 earnings report early next month, which is great news for investors. This is one of the reasons why Spirit Airlines surged more than 20% up to $6.88 in their share price after plummeting once their merger was denied. The reason that their merger was denied is because JetBlue wanted to buy Spirit Airlines for $3.8 billion. However, a federal judge says that it violated antitrust laws. A lot was riding on this merger, because if JetBlue did not acquire Spirit Airlines, Spirit Airlines will be forced to pay $1.1 billion worth of debt, which is maturing next year. And Spirit Airlines does not have the capital to pay this debt, meaning that they could actually end up filing for bankruptcy. So this merger from JetBlue was actually a lifeline to Spirit Airlines, and because it didn't go through, their share prices are absolutely plummeting, until recently, because we just saw that surge of 20%. The second reason for the surge in their share price is because Spirit Airlines and JetBlue are not giving up on their merger, even though it was denied by a federal judge. These two airline companies are continuously reviewing the court's decision, and they are still trying to get their merger approved somehow. If this merger does not go through, many Wall Street analysts believe that this company will end up having to file bankruptcy due to their lack of ability to pay off this $1.1 billion worth of debt, which is maturing next year. So clearly, this is not going to be a long-term stock to invest into, but feel free to trade off of the volatility that we are experiencing, because if the merger ends up going through, this could be great for both JetBlue and Spirit Airlines stock. So I wanted to make you aware of that. Also, a lot of other airlines are also increasing in their share prices recently because of the fantastic demand that we saw during this holiday travel season. So if you are a stock investor in any of these airlines, you are going to have a very good payday coming up when they release their approaching earnings reports. We already saw Delta Airlines report a record amount of annual revenue of $54.7 billion. But despite this, their share price sank by 8% recently because their projections for the remainder of the year and next year did not look as favorable. But even with that being said, we could see United Airlines, Alaska Airlines, and Southwest bring in very impressive revenues in their approaching quarterly earnings reports. In general, a lot of airlines are trading for a very cheap share price right now, and if you are a long-term investor, what these companies are going to be worth in 10 years is far greater than their current value, meaning that you would want to invest into these companies right now and in 10 years really reap the benefits from this. Therefore, I am very excited about these upcoming earnings reports and how other airlines could also post record revenue. So I'm very excited for that. We also have Palantir Technologies in the news, which is an artificial intelligence play. Palantir Technologies is a big data and analytics company which specializes in processing, analyzing, and helping companies and agencies make sense of their data. The reason why many investors are interested in this company is because they surged by 167% last year, which we predicted here on the channel. But the best part is people think that they could do it again in 2024. Palantir Technologies has two main revenue segments, and that would be their government contracting segment as well as their commercial segment. As of right now, their government revenue makes up 55% of Palantir's total revenue. However, investors should be impressed with Palantir continuously expanding their relationships with commercial enterprises. Palantir finished up the third quarter with 181 U.S. commercial customers, which represents a 137% increase from 
from the prior period. This means eventually, their commercial enterprises and customers will outpace their government contracting business, thrusting this company further into profitability. This company is also rapidly scaling their overall customer base, considering that they have 453 customers, equating to a 34% customer growth rate over the last 12 months. Now, this may not seem like a lot of customers, however, their customers have big wallets. Just their top 20 customers spent an average of $54 million per customer over the last year. The company is also increasing their profitability rapidly, to where I think they are going to achieve five straight quarters of gap profitability. And we can also look forward to this company joining the S&P 500. And once that happens, we're gonna see major momentum in Palantir's PLTR share price. However, one of the major drawbacks about this company is their current valuation and share price. Palantir's forward price to earnings ratio right now sits at around 57, and ideally you would want a low PS ratio and a low PE ratio, especially if they don't have very heavy growth. When we compare Palantir Technologies against very large technology powerhouses such as Nvidia, Microsoft, and Apple, Palantir is arguably more expensive on a forward PE ratio basis. I mean, just look at the numbers here. In this scenario, the lower number would be better. So Apple is 27, Microsoft is 34, Nvidia is 45, and Palantir is very expensive, coming in at 56 for their forward PE valuation. This means that investors are overpaying for this stock compared to these other companies. However, there is a catch that was left out of this article. Once you have a forward P.E. ratio, you also want to look at the PEG ratio or P.E.G. ratio, which offsets the P.E. ratio based on the company's growth. And once we incorporate that, they have around a 1 P.E.G. ratio, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we would want to see from a rapidly growing technology company. So overall, this high valuation doesn't necessarily matter right now, especially if you are a long-term investor, and it most certainly does not make Palantir a bad investment. Currently, the company is trading for around $16 but ideally, you would want to snag shares between $12 to $15, even though the most bullish analyst on this company believes it could surge up to $25 over the next year. Overall, I like Palantir fundamentally as a company, and I am going to buy this company on weakness, but as of right now, I am just going to hold it in my portfolio and wait to see where it goes. Speaking about technology companies and stocks that we report on, we just reported on Super Microcomputer and how I have loaded the boat on this company, and today, they have surged by over 30%. So let's dive into their latest news update to determine why their share price has surged so aggressively, especially after we just released a video about them. The share price of Super Microcomputer has surged by over 25%, up to 31.13% as of right now, which is phenomenal news. This surge is so aggressive that they just reached a new record high after the company projected quarterly results well above their current estimates. This just indicates the strong demand that we are seeing from artificial intelligence servers in which this company operates in. So the space that this company operates in is receiving a lot of demand, and this is exactly what I outlined in the previous video. Now, clearly, I didn't know the company was going to surge today, otherwise I would have bought even more. However, the fact that we literally just predicted this is amazing, or at least very coincidental. Essentially, what I like about this company is their liquid cooling solutions for data centers, which process generative AI applications. We also talked about how success for NVIDIA and even AMD is going to be success for this company as well. And an analyst agrees to where he says, and I quote, We speculate that the company's upside is importantly driven by earlier than expected hyperscale engagements that are keen on deploying quickly liquid-cooled racks that uniquely falls into Supermicro's area of expertise. So we just saw a huge surge in demand for this company's products, and this is what they now project for their revenues. Just take a listen to this. Originally, the company forecasted that they would bring in between 2.7 and 2.9 billion dollars, but now Supermicro expects to bring in between 3.6 and 3.65 billion dollars, which is a gigantic increase. But it gets even better because not only is the forecast for their revenues very good, but also their earnings per share. Share. So we are seeing an increase in their top and bottom line. For instance, the company was supposed to bring in $4.40 or $4.88 per share, but now they are anticipating an EPS to come in between $5.40 and $5.50 per share, which is a very large increase. 
Essentially, Super Micro is growing at a 71% sequential growth rate, which is outpacing their generative AI market in which they are a part of, which is growing only at around 41%. The ticker symbol for this company is MSCI, and I would highly recommend you do your own research on this company and tell me what you think. In other technology news, we saw NVIDIA has recently been dethroned according to Citigroup. A Citigroup analyst recently commented that Marvel is now his favorite specialty chip stock, while NVIDIA is now the number two stock. And this is a very interesting development, considering that, in my opinion, NVIDIA is still the king of this overall space. However, Marvel technology is going to take the lead eventually, according to this analyst. So let's see what he has to say. He says that we like the stock set up in 2024 on continued AI optics growth, layering of custom ASIC AI project sales, and bottoming out of non-cloud markets like enterprise networking and carrier, end quote. Basically, the analyst is saying that he is excited how Marvel technology is segmented in various areas that NVIDIA is just not as competitive in. Based on this news, Marvel is already up 2.1%, but I anticipate we could see further momentum in the stock because this is huge news. For someone to state that this company has dethroned NVIDIA is literally groundbreaking. However, there is a catch to this company. Even though Marvel Technologies, according to this analyst from Citigroup, is now the number one semiconductor pick, there is a problem here, and I want to make you aware of it. Marvel Technology recently posted fiscal third quarter earnings where their revenue actually fell from the prior year. And they also said that their next quarter is likely going to be flat as well. However, the quarter after that is when we are going to actually see growth in this company. So if you were to buy into this company now, you're going to receive a lot of volatility over the next six months before this company really starts to get their strength. Stride. But I would love to hear your thoughts down below about Marvel Technology and NVIDIA because I personally own both of these companies in my portfolio. Next, let's talk about the electric vehicle manufacturer named Fisker, and this is a penny stock. Recently, a CFRA analyst upgraded Fisker stock to a hold rating from his original sell rating for this company. Fisker is an electric vehicle manufacturer, and their shares are already down 86% over the last three months. Some of the reason for this is because investor optimism is down, management turnover has been absolutely absolutely insane, there has been production struggles, and Wall Street has downgraded the stock multiple times. However, by this analyst increasing his rating from a sell rating to a hold rating, this is actually pretty good news considering all of the bad news that has come out about Fisker recently. More bad news about Fisker is that the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is actually going to investigate them, which is not good news. The NHTSA posted an investigation notice on its website, prompting a statement from the company on Friday. Normally, these investigations end with some sort of recall or some safety concern regarding Fisker's vehicles or really any automotive vehicle, depending on which type of company this administration is investigating. Now, what prompted this investigation was nine complaints and one crash and one injury report, which were referenced in their report. However, as of right now, Fisker does not have any recalls, unlike other electric vehicle startups, such as Rivian Automotive. And you can see those numbers right here in regards to what they recalled and why they recalled their vehicles. In the end, we're just going to have to follow this story to see what this investigation finds. But overall, the upgrade from an analyst is pretty good for Fisker shareholders. Now, I personally am not invested into this company. I would much rather invest into companies like NEO, Tesla, and BYD, but overall, I would love to hear your thoughts down below about Fisker stock. Last but not least, let's round out the video talking about the top five upgrades and downgrades which happened recently. If you are a stock trader, then these are the types of upgrades and downgrades that you need to know. First, let's start off with Evercore ISI upgrading IBM, ticker symbol IBM. This firm upgraded them to an outperform rating and a price target of $200, which is an increase from their original $165 price target, which is very good. The reason for this upgrade is because IBM is a technology company that is looking to deploy artificial intelligence tools to enhance productivity. Next, we have DraftKings being upgraded, and this is a sports betting company, ticker symbol DKNG, and they were upgraded to a buy rating from their original hold rating with a price target of $45, which is a pretty large increase from their original price target of $40. Therefore, right now may be a pretty good time for stock traders to jump into this company to make a little bit of profit. Next, let's talk about Oppenheimer upgrading AT to an outperform rating from their original perform rating with a $21 price target, and clearly AT&T is a very successful telecommunications company. Last but not least for our upgrades, BMO Capital upgraded Crown Castle, ticker symbol CCI, to market perform rating from their original underperform rating, and they increased their price target from $107 up to $110. But now let's move to the stock price downgrades that we saw. 
Starting off, we saw Jeffrey's downgrade Hertz, ticker symbol HTZ, which is a car rental company, to a hold rating from their initial buy rating. And they also decreased their share price prediction from $12 down to just $8. And this is not good for Hertz. We also saw Discover Financial Services get a downgrade from HSBC, and they lowered their rating from a buy rating down to a hold rating. They also cut their price target from $121 down to just $107 due to mixed quarter four results. On the other hand, we saw Citigroup downgrade Universal Display from a buy rating down to a neutral rating, but they did increase their price target for this company up from $161 to $180. Next, we saw Bank of America downgrade Celsius Holdings from a buy rating to a neutral rating with an unchanged price target of $65. And last but not least, we saw a Truist analyst downgrade LCI Industries. They downgraded them from a buy rating to a hold rating, and they also decreased their price target from $140 down to $110 per share. And the very last thing to round out the video is that Goldman Sachs reinstated coverage of Broadcom, ticker symbol AVGO, with a buy rating and a $1,325 price target, which represents 16% upside. Analysts currently expect strong double-digit revenue growth in the company's artificial intelligence-related business, and overall, I think Broadcom is a very strong company, so I wanted to make sure that this was on your radar. With that being said, thank you so much for watching today's news updates. With that being said, don't forget to go and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, and don't forget to comment down below your thoughts on any or all of these stories. With that being said, I wish you the best of luck, and I will see you in the next YT video.